This morning we are going to do a little activity to continue our Choose Love model. So far we've learned that courage, gratitude, and forgiveness help us to choose love. So to begin, I want us to practice our forgiveness breaths. So we're going to take three of them in. So go ahead by taking a deep breath in through your nose. Wrap all that air around the anger that you feel and then let it go. Let's try it again. Take a deep breath in. Wrap the anger around whatever, the air around the anger that you feel and let it go. And one more, take a deep breath in. Wrapping all that air around the anger you feel and let it go. Now we can also take breaths just to calm ourselves. So let's take a few of those. Taking a deep breath into our nose and slowly letting it out. Again, take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly letting it out. These are different ways to help to calm us down when we're in uncomfortable situations. So in today's video that I had you watch before this, it reviewed the hand model of the brain. And so we're going to go ahead and hold up your hand. And actually, I'm going to use my right hand because it's easier for me. Um, and we're going to make our hand model and review those parts. So the first part we have is the brain stem here. Um, it's the part that just makes you breathe. It makes you run. It makes your body work so that you don't die. So your lungs, your heart, all those parts that you don't have to think about, that comes from here. And inside we have our thumb. That is the emotional part of our brain. It's the animal brain. The li they call it the lizard brain or the numbat brain. It's the, oh the lizard brain's this one. Sorry. So the it's we've been calling it the numbat brain, but it's like the animal brain. It's the part that the emotions. Um, they're harder to control, but they're part that we feel. So that's inside. And then our fingers are the thinking brain. They're the part that we're gonna wrap around the center of our brain, the outside here, that helps us to make choices and be able to think and um, and work. So when our brain is working, we've got a beautiful brain that's all together. When we get frustrated or angry or or, or something is not going quite right, um, our emotional part pushes against our thumbs and separates our thinking brain from the rest of our brain. So go ahead and try that. Squeezing your fingers together, use your thumb and push those fingers out. Push them out so that this part of the brain is no longer helping to control the body. And that's what happens when we um, our emotions get overrun us. We can't think straight, we do things that we don't mean um, or they can hurt other people. And so our job is to do those things that bring our thinking brain back to be able to help us to control and understand our emotions. And so I want you to think of a time that you were really angry. So all of us have felt uncomfortable anger. I know that sometimes I feel anger too. I feel angry when my kids make a giant mess and then leave it for me to clean up. And so you need to remember that anger is a normal feeling. And um, to be able to recognize that anger helps your thinking brain to start recognizing your emotions and saying, hey, it's okay to feel angry, but if you can recognize what's making you angry, then you can do something about it and get out of that state. So just feeling angry makes me recognize that it's not okay to make a mess for somebody else to leave out. Um, and once I recognize that, I can choose an action to take. So one of the things, um, I wanted to, to you to think about was, um, I'm going to read this part from our lesson. It says, this is what happens when we get angry. It becomes difficult for our thoughts and feelings to work together, which is why it might be hard to breathe, sit still, or focus. There are many things we can do to cooperate again. Our forgiveness breath is just one. So I want you to think about the things we've talked about on how we can continue to um, can help control our emotions when they get out of whack. So one was that we have that forgiveness breath that we can do um, or we can calm down. Um, we can also help each other to calm down. And we talked about how when we see a friend that's hurting, we can help them. You can come to me. You can come to a parent. Um, and those people can help you to calm down or um, feel safe again. And one of the things we haven't talked about yet is also that you can be an upstander. 
So an upstander is someone who when they see something that's going wrong somewhere else, they stand up for those people and try to help. So if you see someone who's being treated unfairly, you might think, oh, it doesn't really apply to me. They're having a problem. I'm okay. But an upstander is a person who takes the next step and helps that person. And so when we help somebody um, come up with ideas to help them or um, be positive with our relationships with our friends, um, that means, and when you stand up for somebody, that means that you are going above and beyond. You're being an upstander. And so I always want you, I want to leave with this, that I want you to practice the golden rule. And the golden rule is that we treat others the way we want to be treated. So if you see someone who's not being treated correctly, you can step in and treat those people kindly.